ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming this morning. Beautiful day. Uh, we're very happy for our interim president, Mr. Cliff Smart, to join us here in West Plains to go over the state of the university. He presented this on the Springfield campus earlier. Uh, Mr. Smart doesn't really need an introduction, but I thought I would highlight a, a couple of things of uh, uh, his uh, background there, you know, why would you have a lawyer as the president of uh, Missouri State University? But uh, if you go back and look over his resume, uh, Cliff graduated as valedictorian of his high school class. He then attended Tulane University, the Harvard of the South, and graduated magna cum laude. He then uh, went to University of Arkansas where he got his Juris Doctorate degree was an Oxford uh, scholarship, an Oxford scholar, uh, worked on the law review, and graduated with the second highest GPA from the University of Arkansas Law School. Now those are some academic credentials, I would submit. Of course, that GPA, you know, we have to recognize that was University of Arkansas, so I don't know why we didn't get the first, the highest GPA, but uh, at any rate, uh, we're very happy to have uh, Cliff Smart here with us today, and I will turn it over to Cliff. Good morning, and uh, thank everyone for coming out for this. Um, we're doing our speech this year about a month earlier than usual, and uh, the reason we scheduled it so early is, as you all know, uh, we're in the middle of a presidential search uh, process and uh, did not want to uh, um, interrupt that by giving this speech the day before or the day after one of our other candidates was on, uh, was on campus. Didn't think that would be uh, fair to anyone and so uh, uh, thought about whether we needed to do it at all. Uh, might just skip a year, but really, you know, there, there are good things happening at the university and there are issues that uh, we thought important to share with folks and so uh, uh, we decided that we needed to move on and wanted to move on to be able to talk about some of those things, uh, both on the Springfield campus and here in uh, West Plains. I will give you uh, an update uh, on the presidential search process and I'm told I'm allowed to share this. Um, uh, they, next week, will announce the uh, final three candidates that they will bring to, uh, to all of our campuses for, uh, for people to meet and have input in. And uh, I am told I am one of the three people that they are continuing to vet to make sure there's not something horrible in my uh, background. And so uh, I would anticipate uh, being one of those uh, three finalists, but the, the, the word will come on that uh, with certainty, I think, at the end of next week. Um, we're also doing this talk today on the uh, anniversary of the uh, terrorist attack on our country. Uh, Drew reminded me before, uh, before we came in this morning that he was actually in the Pentagon when uh, one of those planes uh, came into that building. And uh, before we begin, I'd like us just to uh, Take a few moments and uh, uh, remember those who were killed in that attack 11 years ago. As we, uh, as we begin to do this, we will follow the same procedure that we followed last year. I will uh, speak first about the uh, university system and issues there. Uh, give you some highlights of what's going on in Springfield and then Drew will follow me to more specifically address uh, issues at West Plains and then we will each be uh, more than happy to take questions uh, when we're done with that. Uh, the theme of our talk is building on success. You know my perception is we had a good year last year, I hope you agree with that, and we want to build on uh, the achievements uh, that we had. But the title actually means more than that. At a university, as we all know, building takes time. Sometimes, sometimes a long time. And uh, I see Carol nodding her head back there. And, uh, and that's okay. You know, building something meaningful requires consensus, and consensus on difficult issues is rarely obtained quickly. 
Usually many people are involved. Sometimes many, some of those people are no longer here by the time uh, the achievement occurs, but they still share in our success because of their contributions. And so with input from our Board of Governors, our administrative team has put together 10 areas of focus that are on the board now. Uh, we worked on many of these areas last year. Several items have been worked on for many years. They are all in our long-range plan. And so we think it's appropriate to focus on them this year, regardless of who ultimately is selected as president of the university. The first item you see is enrollment. You'll recall that last year uh, our enrollment was down, both in Springfield and West Plains. And, and that's significant uh, because enrollment and tuition and fees is the primary source of our revenue. Now it amounts for about 68% of our revenue. Uh, and so we made enrollment our number one priority last year when we had those uh, uh, numbers. And thanks to some really good work, we rebounded to set records in enrollment in both the spring and the summer on the Springfield campus. And uh, it appears that uh, we will have very good news this fall as well. Our first day enrollments were up on both Springfield and West Plains. Overall, we were up 106 students on the first day. Since that first day, in the last couple of weeks, the numbers have actually continued to increase compared to last year. And so we are optimistic that uh, on Monday of next week, when we do our uh, official census, that we will have regained most, if not all, of the students that we lost from a year ago. There is some additional good news in that as well on the Springfield campus, in that we hit some targets within those numbers. Our graduate students are up see that number, 123 students this year. Um, our underrepresented students were up more than 200, top of 2,000 for the first time. Uh, we had significant increase in international students as well. And all of that is important as the number of high school students uh, that, that are graduating from Missouri schools uh, has actually declined now for the second uh, year in a row, and we anticipate <coughs> that that will continue for the next several years. Some colleges and departments have also had impressive growth. You can see uh, in health and human services and our health fields were up more than 200 students. That is clearly an area uh, where there is uh, a great need uh, as well as significant job opportunities and we continue to grow uh, there. Are there areas that need attention? Yes, there are. Uh, we were down in freshmen. We were down in community college transfer students from outside of Southwest Missouri. We continue to do very well in transfer students from West Plains going to Springfield, from OTC, uh, from Crowder, uh, but in terms of, of uh, uh, out state, including St. Louis and Kansas City, some of those numbers were down this year, and we'll talk about that uh, more in a moment. Um, for this year, in terms of going forward, uh, we want to review and revise our plans for recruiting new freshmen. We have already retooled all of our scholarships uh, for next year. Uh, we will also put together specific plans uh, in terms of transfer uh, recruitment. You, you know, those two groups are, are critical to who we are. Uh, we are a residential campus. We want to always have at least 2,500 freshmen uh, as a part of our system and uh, uh, continue to focus on uh, our resident undergraduate uh, upper class uh, enrollment. Having said that, it, it is also important that we continue to expand our offerings in the evening college, and I'll also talk more about that uh, in a minute. Uh, enrollment remains a priority for many reasons. Uh, first, we want more students to actually have a college degree. Uh, second, increasing the number of college graduates is a goal for our state and nation as nearly two-thirds of all new jobs require at least a four-year degree. Third, uh, performance funding, which will likely begin in Missouri next year, will be based in part on increasing graduation numbers and increasing retention rates. In other words, new money for higher ed is going to specifically be tied to enrollment and retention uh, numbers. Last but not least, given, given the funding environment, increasing enrollment is the only sure way we know that we will increase revenue. It comes with a caveat, however. 
uh, and it's an important caveat. We must increase enrollment without decreasing in any way the quality of our programs. Let me say that one more time. We must increase enrollment without in any way decreasing the quality of our programs. And so when you hear Drew or me talk about enrollment as a goal, uh, it is never meant to be a de-emphasis on the quality of our classes or our programs or the academic rigor of individual uh, professors and classes. Uh, our second topic is funding. Funding obviously is related to enrollment as we just have been uh, uh, talking about. Uh, we did some good things uh, in funding last year. We were able to, uh, to do a mid-year raise, the first across the board raise in three years despite uh, uh, cuts in state appropriations. We instituted the first undergraduate differential fee in the College of Business. Uh, we did exceptionally well in our fundraising. Um, and, and West Plains was a big part of that, uh, including the $4 million state gift. That uh, was a huge part of our success in terms of fundraising last year. Uh, we had a roller coaster ride uh, through the legislative process, as you all will remember. Um, beginning with a proposed cut to all higher ed uh, uh, of 12.5%, and ultimately we were able to salvage a reduction that was only 1%. Uh, we budgeted a 4% reduction at West Plains, or about $100,000, and uh, because that reduction in state appropriations was much less significant than planned, we will uh, put that money back in. West Plains budget and so your budget will be flat this year and uh, we'll have no reduction. Um, looking ahead uh, to the next legislative year uh, that starts in January, uh, we have submitted four proposals uh, for funding, for increased funding for the state. Uh, the first is based on equity. When you look at the four-year schools, we are still next to last when it comes to per student funding ahead of only Missouri Western. Uh, and it is our belief that that must change. Um, and so we have submitted a specific equity proposal that over the next three years, if accepted, would bring us up to the average. We have also submitted funding proposals to deal with inflation, to help fund a new occupational therapy program that is under development, and for maintenance and repair. Given our budget, uh, Reality, however, we have no grand illusion that all of these things will be funded. But we are determined to be in the discussion this time if new money is actually available. And you should know that we work very hard uh, on behalf of the entire system, including this campus, um, on the state level to improve our funding for all of higher education and for Missouri State University. Um, the third issue is public affairs. Uh, we continue to make progress in defining and implementing our public affairs mission, from revising our general education courses to expanding study away to integrating our international students more fully uh, within our campuses. We made progress last year. For example, in our study away program, we had a 34% increase in student participation on the Springfield campus. And we are doing several things to increase that, including a pilot program for need-based study way scholarships. One of my core principles uh, of our team um, is that college, all aspects of college, cannot just be for the affluent. And so we continue to work to make sure all of our students have access to all of our programs. We have added a study way component to our top academic scholarships beginning uh, next year. And on the international front, two of my favorite stories this year involve the success of two student groups. One is referred to as the White String Quartet. Uh, they were a group of four students, four music students, who competed and won the uh, contest for the state of Missouri in string quartets, uh, determined to be the best in our state. They went on to our region in Denver, and they won that. And ultimately, they went to New York City and were one of the top six string quartets in America. Uh, you may think, what, what does that have to do with uh, public affairs? Uh, well, besides competing in, in, in the arts uh, on behalf of their university, uh, the real answer to that is in the composition of the group. Uh, one of the young men uh, was a graduate of Parkview High School in Springfield. One was a graduate of Washington, uh, Missouri High School. And then two 
the two young ladies were exchange students from Qingdao, China. Um, and together they were able to, uh, to take us to new heights in music that, uh, that we had never accomplished before. We also had a group of 19 students go on an alternative spring break in Chicago. They did great things at a uh, food pantry and women's shelter and cleanup projects, etc. But again, the key there is the makeup of the group because it was of those 19 students, 10 were Americans, 9 were international students. And the experience they got to have together, uh, really becoming friends and interacting, that's really what uh, the university experience should be all about. And we. Uh, uh, intend to promote uh, and expand those kinds of activities. This year we are working uh, to develop an annual set of signature public affairs events that will include a public affairs hall of fame and to better publicize these and uh, we want this campus involved in that uh, endeavor as well. Um, our goal here is to continue to work to find the best ways to describe and illustrate the public affairs mission while at the same time raising the profile of the university. Our fourth item is uh, diversity. We make progress in diversity, uh, beginning with the hiring of our first vice president for diversity and inclusion, Dr. Ken Coopwood. Um, we have begun on both campuses evaluating all our senior uh, administrators and staff in terms of diversity. And this year the focus is to work to develop a mentoring program for diverse faculty and staff uh, so that we have a better opportunity to retain those folks and to complete a campus survey to ensure that we are serving our diverse students appropriately. We want this campus to be involved in both of those efforts as well. Uh, the next two subjects I have, I have put together, they are student access and learning as well as our graduate programs. And um, the next three slides I think are, are interesting. This first slide here uh, looks at our student population today and compares it to 20 years ago. And you can see that we're somewhat bigger, uh, but, maybe, but more important than that is, is knowing that the mix has changed. We have fewer first-time freshmen. Uh, we have more uh, graduate students, uh, and we ultimately have more upper-level undergraduate students. Um, <coughs> And that uh, drives both what we teach and how these classes are offered. Uh, you can see that we are graduating many more people on the Springfield campus uh, than we were even five years ago. Th these are actually rolling three-year averages, which is how we track things and report them to the state. But we graduated the, the largest number of people on the Springfield campus this year in our history, more than 4,400. Uh, if we were to look back at the 92 numbers, we'd be 15, 1,600 uh, above that. And so we are uh, graduating many more people, and that, again, that's a part of our goal. That's a part of what we do. Uh, this slide shows us uh, the number of faculty that it takes to do that. Uh, we have 701 faculty at the fall of, uh, of this year in all categories. We go back 20 years, even though we're graduating 15, 1,600 more students a year, we're doing that with only an additional 28 faculty. And, and so the, the point of a couple of points from these slides, one is we've all learned to be more efficient. We've all learned to do more with less. I'm sure we've all heard that. Uh, but I wanted you to know that that's not only true on the West Plains campus, that's true on the Springfield campus. We're all uh, having to do more with fewer uh, resources and uh, we are being successful at that. Um, in terms of uh, uh, some new programs that we are working on, uh, you saw the numbers that we have an additional 200 students in our, in our health programs and so it's not a surprise that we are expanding the capacity of those programs. Uh, we have a new doctorate of nursing practice uh, as well as uh, a new undergraduate program that will start in January related to health, uh, which is a Bachelor of Science in Health Services. That's going to be an important program. Uh, we have lots of students, and you have students here, that get a two-year degree in some health field. But to, to progress into management in health organizations, oftentimes a four-year degree is required. 
And what this Bachelor of Science in Health Services will do is allow those students with a two-year degree in any health field to take two years more of classes and have a, a bachelor's degree in health services that will allow them to progress in their chosen fields. Uh, as I said earlier, we're working on an occupational therapy program. It now takes our hospitals in southern Missouri oftentimes up to two years to hire a new occupational therapist because there are so few. There is no occupational therapy school south of I-70 in the state of Missouri, uh, and we think it's time that we begin to fit that need. Uh, down at the bottom here, under new program options, these are a couple more that are in development. Bachelor of Science in Leadership, Bachelor of Science in General Studies. Those are specifically designed uh, for students who have some college, uh, whether it's community college or other college, and for whatever reason stopped and didn't complete. These will be options where you can go back to uh, school and you will be able to get the maximum credit for the hours that you have occurred and complete those classes uh, and get your degree. <laughs> Uh, we began what we call the Evening College Plus, uh, and as a part of that, we are offering General Business Evening Program in Springfield. Again, it is tailored uh, to our students uh, that live in Springfield, that work, uh, that have uh, gotten a two-year business degree at a community college, and need an evening program to be able to complete that. You know, it is critical that we as a system continue to expand our online blended and evening classes if our goal of moderate enrollment growth is to be attained. Uh, and so in terms of the online pathway, we added criminal justice as completely available online to undergraduates. It's one of our most uh, uh, expanding fields. Uh, it is now possible to get our, our MBA completely online as well as the Early Childhood and Family Development Program. Uh, if you see uh, our uh, uh, classes or programs that are, are available completely online, we added three graduate programs and one undergraduate program this year, but we still only have three <laughs> undergraduate programs that are available completely online. If we are going to serve uh, those students those uh, adult students or non-traditional students, it is imperative that we continue to grow these programs and improve this access. The University of Missouri is doing it. They just committed two and a half million dollars for the expansion of online programs. Uh, and we cannot uh, fall behind the University of Missouri in that or any other area. Uh, having said that, that leads naturally into our, our subject on uh, uh, profile. Uh, oh, let me stop right there. Skip this slide. This shows that we are making progress on this. From last fall to this fall, uh, we've gone from 13% of our classes or 3,200 credit hours being offered at night to 15%. You'll see that we've gone up about a percent in uh, credit hours for online, and our blended classes have uh, have about doubled. So. Um, we are beginning to make progress, but frankly, this is an area that we've been behind in, and uh, we need to focus some effort here. Good, now we're at profile. Um, we raised our profile last year by reaching our, our promised goal and increasing our national and international alumni activities. Gail and I were, were fortunate enough to go on the trip to China this summer where we had uh, our first international alumni events, attended by more than 500 students, most of them Chinese students, not all, some American student, Americans that are living in China, that are our graduates. We have now more than 5,000 students uh, who have graduated from Missouri State University living and working uh, in China. And you can't imagine how excited those group of people were to reconnect with their university and to reconnect with uh, each other. Uh, that trip was more than just uh, an alumni uh, trip. We were able to take, um, uh, a couple of us went to Xi'an, where we entered into a new partnership agreement with one of the top universities in China there. Uh, we interviewed 12 students. We anticipated some group of those would start in the fall. Uh, we learned that not only did all those students start, they added seven or eight more, and there's another 30 that are, are going to come in the spring. And so, uh, again, we continue to expand our, uh, our reach into China. Uh, this year, though, our focus is going to increase the number of alumni activities in southwest Missouri. 
which is our strongest area. We have thousands of alums in every small town from Branson to, to Monette, to Neosho, to Lebanon, to Camdenton, and on and on. We need to make a more organized effort to get them involved in their university. At the same time, we're going to develop a set of major activities to raise our profile all across Missouri, including beginning this year in St. Louis. Uh, we start that on Friday of this week. This goal relates back to the funding objective we talked about earlier. As we all know, private fundraising will be ever more critical to our success as state appropriations decline. If we look back on the last four years, our state appropriations <coughs> have been flat four years ago, then we lost 5.2%, uh, then we lost 7%, and then this year we lost 1%. That's 13.2% over four years. Uh, I'm no mathematician, but I can see a trend. Um, we have to figure out ways to replace that money and raise ever more private money. And we are succeeding at that. We raised over $20 million in private money this year for the first time ever. Uh, but I've told our uh, foundation folks on this campus as well as the Springfield campus, we have to continue to increase that number. Our facilities have been improved significantly. Uh, we opened on the Springfield campus this fall, the Foster Family Recreation Center. If you are in Springfield for any reason, you should come by and go through that building. Uh, I know you all are proud of your recreation center here. It is a fabulous facility. Now both campuses have uh, fabulous recreation facilities. Um, we began today as I drove by it, uh, working on the new campus entrance. Uh, our next project, I think, in transforming the Springfield campus, will be beginning to raise money for a welcome center. Um, students look at facilities. Uh, they look at facilities in deciding where they're going to go to college. And if the facilities are run down, if they're not attractive, um, then they are going to look other places. And so that is uh, an important part of our strategy. Uh, Gone Hall, as you know, is well underway. Uh, I got to tour that with uh, David and Billy Kay and uh, David and Courtney this morning. It will be dedicated and open for business uh, next fall. Um, but more importantly, the next step then is to make sure we are maximizing its use so that any student who is place bound here can take the programs they are interested in. Uh, and we commit to working on that. Uh, our Idea Commons uh, continues to grow. By the end of this year, the Plaster Center for Free Enterprise will be open. It will hire, house our business incubator and, and again be a resource for the business incubator in West Plains. Those directors of both those programs continually interact to improve um, and learn from each other and so we are excited about that as well as the completion of Brick City which will house our art department. Both of those projects will be completed this year. And finally, uh, we get to marketing and I know some of us cringe a little bit when we hear that word, do we market our university, you know, do we market our church? Uh, but, but when I say marketing, all I mean is how do we best promote our programs and improve our reputation? And by that definition, marketing should be a high priority, not only for the board and for our administrators, but for each of us. Our major initiative this year in marketing will be to complete the marketing study. And that will provide some much needed research upon which we can better build our recruitment and fundraising focuses, which takes us full circle back to the first two goals that we talked about. That completes my part uh, of this talk. It's now my great pleasure to introduce our Chancellor, Drew Bennett, to more specifically talk about the achievements uh, of this campus this last year and his plans for this campus in the coming year. Uh, and in doing so, I want to thank Drew publicly for his leadership last year and his, his uh, commitment to continue in that role. And so let's welcome Drew to the podium. Okay, we're halfway there. Take a little stretch. <laughs> um, we are very fortunate at Missouri State University West Plains. Had a fantastic year last year. Uh, it would be hard to duplicate uh, success on that level, but we are going to try. One of the things that uh, we accomplished was that for the second year in a row, we were designated by the Aspen Institute as one of the top 10% in 
of two-year colleges in the United States. And in fact, this year we went beyond that. Uh, we made the top 40. Now, we are disappointed in that we, I'm here to announce, we did not make the top 10. We did not make it the next round. However, let's consider where we are right now. There are approximately 1,200 two-year schools across the United States. Being selected to the top 40 puts us in the top 3%. There are about 110 folks in this theater right now. If we were to have a graduation exercise and have 100 walk across the stage, the first individual would probably be awarded the summa cum laude uh, recognition, the highest honor of academic distinction. The next three or four students would achieve what Cliff Smart did at Tulane University and be recognized as magna cum laude, high honors. We'd be number three in that, in that role. The third person walking across the stage, that is the quality of the caliber of the institution that we have. So, we didn't make it to the top 10, but first year we were in the top 10%. The second year we were in the top 3%, and our goal for next year would be to make it into the top 10. Uh, not, even, not the top 10%, but the top 10 in the United States. A, a, a fantastic achievement, all due to the quality of our faculty, staff, and what we do here at Missouri State West Point. Uh, enrollment on the first day of class was uh, a little bit up from last year. That's a good news story. We measure our enrollment by the 20th class day. So since the opening day, it has gone up and down and up and down. Uh, and we have, we try to track it based on where we are this year compared to where we were the, at the same time last year. This year we have in, added our dual credit students at a little bit different times, so it's a little bit more difficult to measure apples and oranges. As of today, right now, we are a little bit down, but we'll wait until the 20th class day. I suspect we will be very close to flat, maybe a little bit up, maybe a little bit down uh, from where we were last year. However, if you look at the number of students that we are transferring to the Springfield campus this fall, we transferred the largest number that we have in our history. Over 100 students in the fall semester alone transferred into Springfield bachelor and master's degree programs. I say our goal is for us to be a springboard to Springfield. And this fall, we are doing that better than we have ever done in the past. So that is contributing to the success of our entire system. Uh, like Springfield, we added some new programs on the West Plains campus in healthcare, in information technology, and in business. Uh, the healthcare and information technology sectors are uh, growing in the United States, and entrepreneurship is one of the biggest uh, economic engines of the state of Missouri. On Friday, I had the opportunity to attend the Governor's Award Banquet in St. Louis, where Governor Nixon, after an economic development conference, presented several awards. One was to the City of West Plains and the Ozark Small Business Incubator, OSB, uh, for uh, the Community Development Award from the Governor. Missouri State University is very proud that we have contributed to the success as a partner, a significant partner in that uh, OSB small business development uh, incubator with West Plains. Um, in an effort to increase our retention as well as our enrollment to keep more of the students that we have that come here, we started an initiative this year with an education guarantee. Uh, we say and we've passed out to students, you can see flyers around our campus, you can see our education guarantee card that we issued to every student walking in the campus uh, over the first couple of days. We have visited classrooms to talk about it and we developed 10 secrets to success. And many of these were steps to success, academic success that we were already doing, that we were already talking about in individual classes. We kind of, with the help of our faculty and staff, we developed this into 10 steps, things like uh, go to class, uh, 
turn in your homework, uh, go to class. We actually mentioned that one twice. It's kind of important. So I, really, we only have nine <coughs> steps. Let's go to class. It's kind of important. But uh, these are things that we, we mentioned these throughout the course of the year. We thought it might be beneficial to hit all of our students as they start the year with these steps to success and impressing upon our students that they are responsible for that. They have a, a very big responsibility in that uh, success role. However, to encourage them, we came up with an education guarantee uh, using four measurable criteria. If students went to class, uh, if they met with their instructor and advisor, if they turned in their homeworks and assignment, if they went to the free tutoring, and how much does the tutoring cost at Missouri State University West Plains? If they went to the free tutoring, uh, and if they, that we were confident they would be successful. For students that scored below a 2.0, we would allow them to take any class they received an F or a D in the next semester tuition free. Now, again, we expect that if they follow those rules, they will be successful. But if a student received an F or a D, would we not want them to continue their education and retake those classes and overcome those deficiencies? So this pilot program that we started, and it will uh, change and morph and improve as we go through the year, we hope and uh, our desire is will help more and more students be successful. These steps to success are now incorporated into every one of our syllabi. Uh, they are reinforced by the faculty. We talk about it in several different ways. Repetition is the foundation of understanding. Uh, and so this is, uh, you'll see it uh, in, the stall, in the stall study and the, uh, the student signage, digital signage that we have across campus and something that we talk about and are going to talk about again and again with our students in an effort to have more of them be successful. As uh, Cliff Smart mentioned, we have two projects here that we're very proud of. Last year we completed our Student Recreation Center, and we broke ground on our new Gone Hall building, which will house master's and degree programs on the West Plains campus. Uh, my, I walk my dog. I have my own personal trainer. It's an Australian Shepherd. And the dog walks me uh, every day, my wife and I. And as we walk by this building, every day we can see something new that has happened before, uh, since the last day. In fact, we had our Board of Governors visit and have their meeting in June, I, I presented them with a windshield tour of our campus. We walked out of Libire Technology Building where they had their committee meetings and we all piled into a van. And as you walk out of Libire, of course, you face Gone Hall. And I explained to them, now take a good look at Gone Hall because when we get back from driving around the campus, it might be finished. That's how fast the building is going up. Uh, but this will be a great addition uh, to our campus. I was talking with Matt Krause. He said that his parents visited over the weekend and they had visited the campus before, but their comment was, your campus is just booming. It's just growing so big. You know, it, again, uh, a, a sign of a good campus is that there's always some type of construction going on and we're very fortunate to have this project. We'll also sta state that we are very fortunate to have Cliff Smart because this project would not have happened without his help on the Springfield campus. The rec center houses the only racquetball court in uh, West Plains. And we have the Chancellor's Racquetball Challenge for all students. I see our student president uh, stand, sitting out there, uh, Mr. Airy. Mr. Tony Airy always has a smile on his face. Uh, he's well, for several reasons. One, he attends a great campus. Uh, two, he's a positive individual. Three, in October, Tony and I will be traveling to China uh, as the student body president uh, accompanies uh, the chancellor to visit the uh, Dalian campus. But uh, he has not challenged me. He has not taken up this racquetball challenge, uh, the chancellor's racquetball challenge, uh, at this time. And I just, I just mentioned that in passing. <laughs> Um, we are very fortunate on our campus to have a significant development uh, effort. And development happens, it, all of us are, uh, have to work for development. Everything that we do on a day-to-day -day basis 
uh, works toward development. We were very fortunate that Mrs. Brooks left an estate gift of $4 million to Missouri State University for need-based scholarships. She did not do that because she thought this institution was not worthy. She did it because of the reputation that you establish every day. Uh, there was a lot of hard work that went into that uh, gift to make sure that that, uh, that, that gift uh, came here, but it started with uh, individual contact with people on our campus. Uh, everybody here contributes to that reputation uh, of our campus. Additionally, we added our second professorship. There are very few, if any, two-year schools that have endowed professorships which state the importance and esteem that we hold our faculty and our effort to compensate our faculty with, with the market. So we're very fortunate that to add our second endowed professorship and we have plans to endow other professorships in the future. Uh, we have some uh, new faculty and staff on our campus today. In fact, if anybody is on this list, I see a couple, please raise your hand and wave wildly, stand up and scream. We have some people here that are, that are new. Welcome to a great campus. On the staff side, those positions were either replacing uh, vacancies that came about naturally or a, a grant funded opportunity. On the faculty side, you will note that two of those positions are new positions. Again, as our enrollment increases, we are increasing our faculty. Those two new positions are based on the faculty senate priority of what uh, positions we needed to continue to offer the academic programs that we have on this campus. I'll also reinforce the goal of uh, diversity by saying that two of these positions were made possible or assisted by the diversity hire program that is within our system. Now how did we come up with uh, diversity as uh, an important goal and, and uh, allocating resources to that? Some of you are familiar with SESI, which is the um, Community College uh, Council on Student Engagement. And we conduct a SESI survey of our students to get data on how we are doing. And Dennis Lancaster, who conducted this survey before Pat Walsh uh, took over, uh, we were talking that uh, about three or four years ago, we, uh, for two years in a row, our SESI uh, survey results indicated that we were doing a fantastic job, significantly higher than many other two-year colleges uh, in our student engagement, because we find that engaging students on our campus outside the classroom helps them do better inside the classroom. This is fact-based statistical evidence. But there was one category that we did not do well, not surprisingly, giving the service area of Missouri State University West Plains. The question, have you had a significant conversation with someone of a different ethnic background, was a question that we lagged far behind the national average. So using, in an assessment process, factual data to, to identify issues and then place resources based on uh, again, data of where do we need faculty, we have been able to use the diversity hire program. And I'll close by saying that this program will save Missouri State West Plains $100,000 by the time we look at uh, some of the uh, cost savings and salary that the Springfield campus will offset, as well as the fact that we didn't have to fly in uh, candidates for interviews and publicize uh, the positions. So these the uh, hiring new faculty is a great thing, and being able to use the diversity hire program has significantly assisted our campus in meeting established goals and needs that we have developed. This is important as we get into the assessment process for our accreditation visit. Here at Missouri State West Plains, we teach gen ed classes and are focused on several gen ed outcomes, communications, critical thinking, uh, valuing, information management, and global awareness. Using those uh, as our gen ed uh, outcomes, we are in the process now 
of writing our, developing our self-study, and as you can see the timeline, we'll have a accreditation visit in 2014, the March, April, late March, early April time frame of 2014. But we have been working on this process, and as you can see right now, we are in the process of writing the self-study. Using that assessment process, tying that to those five Gen Ed goals, using factual data to show how we are allocating resources will be part of the story that we tell. And it's a continuous process. Um, retention is not a problem that you solve. Retention is something that we work on. We will never say we have complete 100% retention. Um, in fact, we have said that we acknowledge as an assumption some students are going to fail. Failure is a learning process in and to itself. But we, if we can help more students be successful, that is important. To that end, we are, uh, thanks to our Title III grant, able to proceed with uh, some other initiatives, our professional development cohort, which will look at uh, developing a first year experience. And I believe next week we will have Mr. Graham, John, or excuse me, John Gardner on our campus. I would encourage all uh, of our faculty to attend, uh, faculty and staff to attend uh, the sessions on Monday and Tuesday that Mr. Gardner will present as we look at creating a first year experience and on a two year campus, first year experience is you know, even more important than a four year campus because we only have those students for half that amount of time. But if we can uh, capture those students in their first year, energize them, uh, commit them to their education, show them the steps that make them successful, more of them will be successful. Not all of them, but more of them, and that is our goal. This marks the 50th year of Missouri State University West Plains. 2013 will be our 50th year. I was able to attend uh, an award banquet where Bill and Virginia Dar, who are friends of Missouri State West Plains, uh, they support our Dar Honors Program, our Grizzly Bear, uh, the Bronze Grizzly Bear, which is the photo moment for every student that visits our campus, was donated by Bill and Virginia Dar. They graduated from SNS at the time in 1955. And when they spoke, Virginia said, in 1955, there were approximately between two and 3,000 students on the SMS campus in Springfield. Today, in 2013, there are approximately between two and 3,000 students on the Missouri State University West Plains campus. 50 years ago, we started with 111 students. So we are going to mark and celebrate this uh, milestone this year. There are several events that we're going to have. But one of the events that's not listed on there is our 50th anniversary Alaskan Frontiers and Glacier Cruise that you probably have heard about. Now your idea of a vacation might not be going on a cruise with the Chancellor. But look at the glass as half full. You might have the opportunity to throw the chancellor off the boat. <laughs> but we have a great program and we have scheduled it in July from uh, t July 12th to July 22nd so that as many of our faculty and staff could attend as possible. Um, it's, a, it's a good deal. Missouri State University West Plains is not running this cruise. We don't receive any uh, uh, kickback on this. But it's an opportunity for people that are committed to the success of this campus to enjoy a vacation together and celebrate. So I encourage you to think about attending our Alaskan Frontiers Cruise Line. That's one of the reasons why Heather and I have been on this diet. Uh, so because you can eat for seven days nonstop on one, <laughs> one of these cruises. But we have uh, several things that we're going to celebrate and, and continue to remind our community Again, I always say that we're not a community college, but we are the college of this community. We would not be here without our community support. And uh, over the last 50 years, it is impressive what this campus has been able to accomplish. And that uh, concludes our program. At this time, uh, Cliff Smart and I would be happy to answer any questions. Any 
raise your hand and stand up and ask a question, we will move forward. So, uh, Ken Coopwood, who's our Vice President for Diversity and Inclusion, that is uh, his primary goal that I've tasked him with this year is to, is to develop such a program. And it needs to be part of uh, a new faculty program um, and, and not separate from. And so I, I, uh, I think he's the point of contact for uh, Chris, for you to reach out to him and, and to let him know that, that to to the extent that it's feasible and reasonable, you, you all want to be involved in that and, and can share successes and failures and thoughts and and, uh, um, and it will be another way to connect our two campuses together. And so I think we're very open to that. Thank you. Terry, yeah. I just, you noted at the beginning that the number of high school students graduating in the state of Missouri is decreasing. And I'm guessing that's a population issue and not anything else. And have you looked at those population trends to see how that is going to affect? Uh, we, we, we do track those and uh, for um, uh, at least the, this is the second year in a row that the number, the actual number of students graduating from high school in Missouri has declined. Uh, it's likely to continue for the next several years uh, before it turns back around. Um, for, for us on Springfield, since we recruit um, from the entire state, the biggest area that is declining is St. Louis area. Uh, their community college system, for example, they have either four or five different campuses, uh, lost 2,000 students this year, uh, which is a huge loss. And uh, that then impacts on us because outside of Southwest Missouri, that's the biggest area of students that come. And so we lost some students from both St. Louis area uh, community colleges as well as freshmen. Um, and so you, knowing that that's the case and uh, knowing that A-plus directs students to both West Plains and community colleges because they can go for free, changes the mix or the focus of, of Springfield. That's why, in part, we have more upper-level uh, undergraduate students. That's why we want to grow our clinical doctorate programs. Uh, it's why we uh, focus on international students because uh, those students ultimately replace some of the students that uh, either are not graduating or beginning their college careers uh, at a community college. In light of the West Plains campus, uh, there are some other factors that come into play. Number one is that 40% of our students are non-traditional students. So the high school class doesn't impact that. Additionally, in our seven county service area, the number of students who go to college is a le lower percentage than the state average. So we have an untapped market there, and that's one of the reasons why through our um, uh, college uh, uh, threshold success grant, her with the threshold, threshold grant, we have been able to fund our high school extravaganzas, which go to the, high, the 23 high schools in our 10 county service area to promote going to college, and we have increased that number. Now, again, uh, we are a bit of a microcosm, so West Plains High School is the largest high school that, that where we get most of our high, our high school graduates from any one other school, and if their enrollment goes down, we have a, a you know, there's a correlation there but there are some other factors that limit that uh, across, the, across the state. This is assuming we can ask a question about any information we've been given here, but what's the proper procedure to schedule a time to give the chancellor his next lesson in racquetball? <laughs> we have a, a very strict procedure. Now, first of all, 
let me say that the chancellor's challenge of buying a, fr a lunch anywhere in West Plains to the, to the individual that beats him in racquetball uh, is for the student body. So you have to enroll in a course if you want a free lunch. Now you can school me, I'll, I will take challenges otherwise. I'm a new student here. New, sir. Outstanding, all right. Well, if you will call 255 7900, you can get in the queue of the long list of people who are trying to school you. Thank you, Chancellor. Yes, sir. Uh, President Scott, I, uh, as you know, are a SMS business major, and I've been concerned for quite some time about the ads that I see on television for online universities and online graduate programs. In fact, in my small community, uh, we have teachers who are in, in, engaged in online master's degree programs, and the fees that they're paying for that master's degree program are reported to be $13,000 for the master's degree program. I heard your brief remarks about your continuing um, advances in that online opportunities, but I'm concerned about the quality of these online universities that are um, seem to be um, growing in huge numbers, and uh, I, I think that the universities should address that that uh, situation. Yeah, thank you, Wendell. Let me let me talk about a couple of points. Uh, I'd respond to that uh, f first. All online education is not equal, just like all seated classroom education is not equal. There are different qualities of online education. And so, for example, um, when, when at Missouri State we offer our Master's in Business Administration online, those classes are taught by the same professors that teach our seated courses. And that program is accredited. Uh, and so the quality of online courses that you get from Missouri State should be significantly <coughs> higher than if you were taking an MBA program from uh, an, an unaccredited school uh, taught by faculty that uh, whose primary focus is not as teachers. And so um, I would also suggest that our online cor courses are significantly less expensive than those of our competitors. And so uh, you're right, you, should, you sh can get an MBA uh, online from West Plains at Missouri State, and I suspect it would be about half the cost of uh, getting an MBA from one of our non-accredited schools. Now, you may have to work harder uh, in the classes that we offer, um, uh, but I think the quality of the education would be different. And, you know, the quality concern is a real concern. And so um, there are some programs that it does not make sense to do online programs for, and particularly your science programs. You know, it's very difficult to do labs online. Some people have tried to figure out a way to do that, but, but whether you're getting an equivalent uh, education and being actually in a chemistry lab as opposed to doing an online chemistry lab, I think there are legitimate issues there. There are, there are issues of plagiarism, there are issues of cheating, and there are a variety of things that have to be tackled. And you need to be trained as a professor to teach online courses because it's different than, than lecturing in a seated classroom. But one of the things that we have found is, is that if you do online courses the way they should be done, um, you get a, as good an education as if you're in a seated class. One of the and I'm giving you more than you want to know, but uh, let me tell you one story. Um, uh, and I shared this with our, with our faculty th this summer. Um, we had a, a, a Master's of Education, uh, and I've forgotten exactly what, what the course was, th that was an online class that was this summer. And people signed up, and one of the, one of the teachers, already a teacher, trying to get his Master's signed up, was teaching uh, somewhere in the Arab world. And, uh, and so his posts about his experience teaching in uh, uh, the United Arab Emirates, I think, in terms of an old-fashioned school system and how the superintendent wanted them all to, to memorize everything and fill out uh, uh, 
fill the blanks in on sheets as opposed to actually thinking and analyzing and learning how to work through problems. And him sharing all those things online with students from here, she said the most incredible discussion board sprung up as a result of having that student in a class. And so uh, I'm here to tell you that online education can be done in a very effective and cost-effective way, but as consumers you need to be careful about what classes you're signing up to from, from what places because many of them are not cost-effective and many of them are not of quality. I could uh, <coughs> comment on that as well. At every new student uh, uh, red carpet day where we try to uh, recruit students, one of the things that we say is that if you're looking for a school where you give them your pay and you get an A, this is not that school. We will not apologize for our academic rigor. That's one of the reasons why the Aspen Institute selects us as uh, so high in our, uh, compared to other two-year colleges. But another thing that we, uh, as Cliff Smart said, is the faculty member that makes those classes successful, we have sitting with us here today Anthony Priest. And I have read student evaluations of students who took Anthony's English course online that comment about the engagement of the faculty in their learning process. So it can be done. We have faculty that demonstrate that they can do that. And finally, I would talk about the quality of the MBA program here that's offered and delivered through the West Plains campus. Our director of business, uh, Scott Schneider received his MBA from MSU, West Plains campus, and it was one of those, uh, the, the quality of that degree was a factor when he was evaluated for this position. One last question. Is there a continuing discussion on doing away with out-of-state uh, uh, you want me to address that? In, in terms of our system, uh, for, uh, for the main campus, um, uh, we, we are not talking about that. However, let, let me tell you what we do in terms of, of uh, out-of-state tuition. If, uh, if you score an ACT of 24 or better, it's waived. And so you receive in-state tuition. Uh, if your uh, parent or grandparent was an alum of Missouri State and you live anywhere in the world, out-of-state tuition is waived. And so uh, those are the two primary mechanisms that we deal with that. And in terms of the significance of that, um, uh, being a selective admission campus, our average ACT is 24. And so if you hit that average, that means you can pay in-state tuition and so that makes uh, Missouri State, Springfield, uh, a very affordable opportunity. Uh, for the West Plains campus, if you're in Arkansas, your tuition is uh, waived. We have an agreement with Arkansas that we, they pay state tuition. And Lee, thank you very much. Thanks for coming.